<laughs> Naturally Innovative here, so Peter Bone see we back, 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 back with another video. If you are single, this is for my single people. This word is for you, what the Bible says about singleness and what you need to know about this time. So shout out to you because this message is for you. All right, so let's get right into it. So what does the Bible say about singleness? I couldn't find that many scriptures about singleness, but what I do know is that one of the most influential people in the Bible was Paul, who was a single man, from what I know. And um, we could take a lot of things from his life and the way that he just lived. So not going to get too far into this. I got just three, three, three things, really. And what the Bible says about singleness also, you know, what I just felt the Holy Ghost saying to me to tell you about this journey and this moment that you're um, right singleness, now. right? Number one is a special time from God um, to focus on who He is without your attention being divided on other things. Um, in First Corinthians seven thirty two through thirty five, it says this: "But I want you to be without care. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, for he um, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares about the things of the world and how he may please his wife. There's a difference between a wife." and a virgin, right? The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she who is married cares about um, the things of the world and how she may please her husband. 35, and this I say for your own profit, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is proper and that you may serve the when Lord you're unmarried without for a man. You know, you're caring about the things of the Lord and how to please the Lord. For the woman, when you're unmarried, you care about the things of the Lord that you may be holy both in body and spirit. You know, God is calling the woman, obviously, to be holy um, more so, especially when it comes to outer appearance because of the different, different bodies that a male and female have. Um, and so, yes, this is a special time from God to focus on God, to trust God, to just know that when you're focused on God, you don't have that a, attention dividing saying like hey now i have to think about my husband now i gotta stop what i'm doing and praying you know let me go fix some some breakfast or let me do this you know you're constantly when you're married always thinking about the other person and paul is saying you know this is a special time where there is no distractions where there should be a time of just completeness with god number two this time of singleness is for preparation not just for marriage but for your overall growth in life yeah, here we go. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. Um, what did I write? So during this time, you're learning your purpose and ways to please God in this moment in your life journey financially. You're learning how to set up, you know, that thing, uh, which is very important to a marriage, to your life, to your future. You know, having a career, having success in your career, you know, um, just being disciplined overall, especially when it comes to the flesh, not giving your body to any and every person, learning how to really um, make time for the things of God and to just really just avail yourself, you know, um, whatever it is, whatever that takes, you're preparing yourself for even that moment of being married or just that moment of even like transitioning into ministry or whatever it is that God is wanting to take you to the next level. This is the time for you to sit and say, you know what? What is the plan for my life? What is the goal, the ultimate goal? So we're allowing God in this moment of preparation to mold us, right? To transform us, um, whether it's from bad habits, whether it's from addictions, whether it's from healing and delivering from different things, from trauma, from your past. This is that time that you need to be praying about those things. That, hey, I don't want to bring negative and curses and things into my marriage or into the next phase you know, that God is wanting to take me. So boom, that's number two. Number three, singleness can be good because it allows God to isolate you to himself, right? And still First Corinthians 7, you can really find all of the about singleness in this one chapter. First Corinthians, this, this one is 7, 8. But I say to the unmarried and the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am, right? Single. Verse 9, but if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry. For it's better to marry than to burn with passion. And so this is the time, right, that God wants to isolate you to himself. I know you might think, oh, I'm lonely. 
No, it's a time to, it's a delicate time where God maybe is wanting to um, speak to you on certain things that he wants you to change or things he wants you to keep doing. Um, when you walk in the ways of God, right? You're walking in the ways of God during this time. He's showing you what a true relationship looks like with God and you, right? That is the ultimate first relationship we should even have before we can even think of have a relationship with someone else. Um, you become, learn to become one with Christ. And that means the sacrifice that you have to make on a daily basis to make time and room for him, quality time that you would make for a significant other. Um, you're learning how to trust God, loving him faithfully as he teaches you how to love even your husband. God is going to teach you how to love your husband. Ain't that something? Ain't that a blessing? Okay. Let this time be sensitive um, as you learn even the voice of God, you know, so you can have direction, you can have wisdom. Um, so you're able to even know which man or which woman I need to be even investing in. You're learning what you need and what's not so important in relationship. And so for me, I want to give my own little, little, little bit. Give me like one minute. I promise I'll be done. When it was time, when it was me being single, I didn't spend enough time preparing. I must say, I didn't spend enough time even finding out what God wanted from me even in our relationship, me and God. So I know that I needed a man to be Christian in order to lead me and guide me into the things of God. And also I know that when you really have a strong foundation, he will be able to be disciplined in the flesh. But I too <laughs> should have been preparing myself to also be disciplined in flesh, that's another video. Um, in order to be led and to be disciplined, right? So I stopped praying for a man that loved God. Because at first my prayer was, you know, I want a man to love God. And I will keep finding that same type of man and say, hey, you know, I love God. But their lifestyle and their fruit did not follow suit. So it was more so I wasn't praying that a man loved God. I was praying that he had a relationship with God, he had an experience with God. Because that was important to me. Because I felt that when you have a relationship with God, and I should have been praying that for myself too, right? Um, when you have a relationship with God, that's when you start to depict some of the other characteristics that God is and who he is, right? And how he is, you know, being slow to anger, learning how to have self-control, fruit of the spirit. He'll be walking in his ministry. He'll be doing all these things because he has a relationship with God. He's listening to the voice of God. He's not just saying, I love God. Yeah, I love of God. We love a lot of things, but we don't spend time with those things, right? We don't, okay, I love grapes, but I don't sit and I look at it every day like, oh my God, I love grapes and get to know it, what grapes is and how was it made and where was it made? Like, I don't really dig deep into those things, right? This is good, okay? Um, so it's just like, yeah, all of that is just important. You want someone to have a relationship. Those are the things you should be praying for, specifically praying that God prepares you in this time. I get it. Of course, we all want love. We all want to be able to experience marriage. And it's fun. It's beautiful and all those things. But when it gets hard, and it will get hard, um, you just want to be able to have that right foundation in your life and know that, hey, when I was single, I prepared for this. Hallelujah. I prepared for this moment. And so I just want to end with prayer. And uh, I'll be gone, y'all. Dear God, we thank you for this time, for the preparation and the things that you are doing in the lives of your people. We know that in this time of singleness that you will prepare my brothers and sisters in Christ to trust you, to know you, to serve you, to seek after your God so that they too can have the right foundation and the right structure so that they can find the right people that they need to be married to. God, we're praying for equally yoked marriages in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Mwah!